Good morning. Good afternoon, actually. I think it's after 12. It's Sunday of a long weekend, so I guess I could be forgiven for forgetting the time. Um, hi, my name is Shannon Bellum. I am... This is Whiskey and Wool. This is a video channel about mostly about knitting, and I've recently learned to spin, so I'm going to talk to you about spinning. And occasionally we talk about whiskey on here. I um, I'm drinking iced coffee. It's a long weekend here in the US, and I think it's a long weekend in the UK too. I think I saw something on Instagram about that. Um, so actually, I took the entire week off this past week, and um, I got a lot of crafting done. A lot of crafting done. A few other things happened, which I may or may not tell you about. It just see how it goes. Um, not craft related, because <laughs> craft related, you're getting it all right now. Um, this is episode 51. And yeah, I'm so happy for you to be joining me today. Whether you're a new viewer or returning viewer, welcome. Um, I really love sharing my weekly progress or my bi-weekly progress. And I, um, enjoy hearing your thoughts and comments. I read every comment and comment back. Um, so yeah. Okay, let's get started. I have two finished objects. Um, I'm wearing one and Martha's wearing the other. Um, I'm going to talk about Martha's first because it is a little more straightforward than the one I'm wearing. So um, Martha is wearing the As If Tea. It literally just finished drying, otherwise I probably would have it on instead of her. Um, I, the, oh, let me, let me let's, let's start at the, let's start at the beginning. So the As If Tea is a crop sweater by Shay Johnson. I didn't know what a badass she is, what a badass Shay is. I mean, you look at this picture right here and she looks like such an innocent young woman who's just like playing around with knitwear design and da 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 da. No, actually she's a Harvard Law um, attorney and she's a real badass. Um, I saw an interview with her and um, uh, with on Christy Glass's channel if you're interested and yeah, I was super impressed. This, I think this is the first pattern she designed. I think that's what she said on the, um, on the channel. And it, she just did it for the heck of it. Cause she, I guess she wanted something and she couldn't find a pattern. So she just decided to make it. And, um, anyway, I saw it on Christy Glass's Rhinebeck sweater video. Um, last October and I immediately queued it on the you know in the couple days after I saw the video or when I saw the video which was maybe a week or two after Ryan Beck and um, I've been thinking about what yarn to purchase for a while um, I've been trying to you know just circling around different things that I might want to do um, and I thought about shopping for the yarn at Vogue Knitting Live but then Fiber for the people. Do I have her tag? I don't think I have her tag here. Um, but I do have the yarn. So um, this is what I have left. I bought four skeins of this gorgeous, mostly navy with like um, pieces of blush and or like rose gold, I would call it. Not blush. Um, green, gold, some brown in there. A little bit of white occasionally but mostly this gold color and the rose gold color um, going through it, which you can see quite well. So um, Taylor, who is the owner of Fiber for the People, she had, um, she had posted a picture on Instagram of this color, and I think she had done it on a couple different bases, and it immediately sold out when she posted it. And I thought, oh, that's pretty. This pattern at the As If Tea, it calls for a um, Aran weight yarn. So I, I don't know. I, I guess I, I kind of I, I was thinking that Aran would be a little too heavy for me. Perhaps I would rather have DK. I settled on worsted. So what happened was Taylor sold out on the color, 
and did a pre-order listing next like her next shop update she did a pre-order for it and you were able to buy the color on any base so i found a non-superwash worsted weight <laughs> um and i went with that so i pre-ordered this probably the week or maybe 10 days before vogue which was like early january was when i pre-ordered the yarn um, and then I set about looking for a uh, mohair, a silk mohair that would complement it. And um, I thought, I just, I really searched high and low and I was following Neighborhood Fiber Arts for a while and she, oh, I found the Fiber for People label. It's a cactus. She's in Nevada, uh, Taylor. So I, I searched high and low for a... Um, Sorry, just looking for the for a mohair, and then uh, Neighborhood Fiber Company posted a a picture, an image in her because she was at Vogue. She had a um, a picture talking about her her mohair silk, and she said it was a sixty forty blend, which I thought was interesting and exciting. And she had this gorgeous, gorgeous, dusty rose gold well it's dusty it only <laughs> i say dusty because it's actually fuzzy so it kind of fuzzes the color um but she had this gorgeous rose gold so in my in my mind's eye they went together and it wasn't until probably april when i got this yarn that i was able to see that yes they go together so after neighborhood fiber company posted the picture and i saw this beautiful blush color a rose gold color um it's actually called cross street market um, I then purchased two skeins of it at um, at Vogue, and I have a lot left. So um, I bought four skeins of this because it was worsted weight, and I also knew I was going to make the sweater longer than what um, Shay's was because I have a very big bust. So to get a crop over my bust, like if I had ended it where she suggested it, it, pro it would be right at the end of my bra line, which is right here. I, I would have maybe had about a half inch below that <laughs> so I had to go much longer um, so I wanted to be prepared I wasn't sure how much yarn I would need but I actually only used half I only used this is what I have left of the second skein so I have two more skeins of this I don't know what I'll do with them who knows some presents for people maybe in around Christmas time so yeah that is my as if tea um that it went so fast so so fast um as soon i knit oh i did a few mods i knit in the round so she shay johnson has you do them it's a bottom up knit so she has you knit it from knit the back knit the front and piece it together at the shoulder seam and then um knit the collar knit the sleeve cuff and you're you're done um the I decided so I did several mods one was I decided to knit in the round so I decided to knit in the round up to the armpit because that was where I found up to the underarm that was where I found you started with the um, the illusion neckline that was one change another change was that I did one by one rib instead of two by two I think she asked for you to do I don't remember but I did one by one everywhere I know that these were supposed to be two by two but I just decided to do one by one um, everywhere because it's a heavy yarn and it's also non superwash so um, yeah the other mod I did was I um, the pattern calls for you to carry both yarns all the way across in this section here and I thought what that would end up doing for me was um, if I had two colors that were very closely matched I might have been fine doing that but with this particular yarn it was just going to end up looking like a third color and i didn't want that so i did a true intarsia so i just since i had two skeins of the mohair i i rolled off a little bit like i made a third ball um so i could do mohair 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 and then i had i had of course plenty of of um that so i just attached two balls here and i did true intarsia all the way across the top and it was pretty fast like you can see it's not that many rows so I didn't find it too hard um, at all, like juggling all those balls. I was done like in a, I don't know, it doesn't seem like very long. Definitely one evening of sitting, of couch sitting and watching Netflix. So I, I think it was even 
maybe an hour, hour and a half at the most to do that section. So once I was done with that, I was able to continue on up. Um, a second mod or third, fourth, I forget, <laughs> I lost count of how many mods. Another mod I did was um, she has you knit all the way to the top and put those center stitches on hold and then you're done. There was no shoulder or neck shaping. So I decided to put the stitches on hold early. So I knit about an, you're supposed to knit, I think two, two and a half inches, depending on your size. So I knit about an inch and a half, then put the stitches on hold. And then I continued each shoulder separately. And unfortunately I bound those shoulders off on the front. Cause then I went around to the back to do the back. And um, on the back, I followed the directions, which was to, cause you can see the mohair is pretty forgiving. So even though I don't have any neck shaping in there, can you see it? Even though I don't have any neck shaping in there, it's, it's, it's pretty shapely. Let me just grab you for a minute. Hi guys. Look, uh, oops, oops, oops there. There you go. See, you can, you can see like it's pretty shapely, even though I knit straight across. Okay, there we go. Okay, perfect. Um, so at some point in there, after I had cast off the front and I was working on the back, I put it on the form, on the dress form, and I realized that the front was about an inch and a half too short in the shoulder. So it was ending like here and I needed it to go up to here. So I had to, I knit the whole back. I'm trying to think, I knit the whole back. Yes, I knit the entire back and then I went back and, and unpicked the bind off and re-knit. Um, I left the, the, the back shoulder on um, hold and on, on a needle and when I knit the fronts, I did a three needle bind off instead of having to do a join, which worked okay. I'm gonna warn you, like if you decide to follow in my footsteps and do a three needle bind off for the shoulders or in any mohair, um, it's super slippery. And I had to, even though I was using size seven needles, I ended up with a very, very tight shoulder. I had to rip out and do over. It sucks. Like ripping out mohair really sucks. Like the um, the mohair sticks to itself and it's slippery with the silk makes it slippery. So, um, yeah, I ended up having to redo it, re redo the, <laughs> the mine off. Otherwise I would have had like a gathered shoulder, which, okay, that's a good thing to remember that binding off tightly in mohair makes gathers. Um, but anyway, yeah, that was it. And then I did the neck, um, I really like it. I love the way it looks on me. I'm going to pop a picture of it on me here. Um, I didn't, um, I try, I haven't tried it on actually since it got finished drying. Like it, it dried overnight and then it's, it's a beautiful warm, warm day outside. Um, perfect, like just perfect Memorial Day weekend weather. Um, it must be beautiful at the beaches if for those people that are that are out at the beaches um, this weekend, doing a beach weekend. I don't like to do beach weekend on Memorial Day weekend because I usually find it a little cold. Um, I prefer to stay home and stay by the pool. It's a little more comfortable. Um, it's actually really, really hot out though. I, I don't think I could last out um, too, too long. Though I will, I'll, I'll go out later. I'm gonna need to a, a cool swim after sitting here in this under these lights <laughs> on this warm day in this fuzzy mohair sweater. Um, all right, so that's my As If Tea by Shay Johnson. Um, it was such a fun knit. I would highly recommend it. I, I can see why people make several. Um, I could see that it would be really addictive. And I didn't use all that much yardage either considering the mods I made. I ended up not getting gauge. I was My gauge was bigger than what she hers was and I ended up um, knitting a size down to get it to f be the right size for me. So all of that, I write, I write pretty good notes on my project pages on Ravelry. So if you missed any of the mods or if I missed telling you about a mod, which is possible, you can find it all there in, um, in my notes. Yeah, okay, that's it for what Martha is wearing. I may end up changing Martha into a whip in a few minutes, we'll see really like it though. I love the way it looks. I like the crop. I like that it's breezy. It didn't feel that warm when I had it on. 
Uh, anyway, all right, enough about that. So I am wearing um, a new design. I haven't quite decided on the name. Hopefully I'll decide on it. I'm thinking something like Maudlin, Maudlin, not, not with the T or E-D, Maudlin Maiden, something like that. It's a very romantic, very romantic uh, sweater. This is part of my I need spring summer cardigan uh, sweater knit that I do. I start working on probably every April or so making um, cardigans that are nice to just throw on over other um, over like a sleeveless tank top like what I have on now just to be a little bit warmer especially in air conditioning. Um, this is uncharacteristically romantic though for me or feminine for me like I don't tend to wear these um, these type of be ribboned things but the funny thing was when I was knitting this I knew I was going to do a lace panel down the sleeve here in the center of the sleeve after I did the yoke and I was thinking to myself like this it's a um uh like a very easy lace very I'm probably memorized it in the first two repeats and then I was I was you know I could even I could tell you what the pattern is right now like it was that easy to remember um the sweater I'm gonna have I'm gonna be putting pictures in of me in it so you can see it on me and I don't have to get up and move around and stuff the design I was just inspired by well partly by this like just doing these combinations of mohair and um fingering weight, not necessarily worsted weight, but mohair and, and a fingering weight yarn, like using mohair as a color, as a texture with um, another, with like indie dyed fingering weight yarn. So that that's what was my inspiration was. Um, and I wanted to use stash, so I had some of this mohair um, from Legacy Fiber Arts. It's on their cloud base, and this is the, the typical, what you see, 7228 uh, Kid Mohair Silk, 459 yards. Um, it is the colorway Vanilla Bean, so there it is. This is all I have left after this sweater, so I've used quite a lot of it. Um, but I had bought this originally as, um, thinking that I would use it for this, I bought this color and um, a pink color from Legacy Fiber Arts, and I figured, you know, this is a really good color. It goes with everything. So I figured if I didn't use it for the as if tea, I would find something else to use it with, to use it for. Um, so, and that's, and we ended up with this, <laughs> this lovely. Um, oh, I feel like I'm not doing a good job of telling you about it. What else can I tell you about it? It's a really simple cardigan. You know what? I'm going to take it off. I'm going to, I'm going to put it on Martha. Okay. We've swapped outfits. We've swapped sweaters. Um, so what was I telling you? I wanted to show you a couple cute little details. So I ended up doing, um, the sleeve has no, no decreases. Um, it just is knit straight from the armhole. And it has um, this lace panel right here. I talked about this in my last episode. I think I had knit one of the lace panels all the way down and then you put those stitches on hold down here, um, then knit the other part of the sleeve back and forth, like, um, so you're knitting it kind of flat, but in the round <laughs> until you get to the bottom, and then um, put all those stitches on hold and knit this um, open cuff. So, and then after that, I just uh, laced up this silk ribbon. I bought five yards. This is all I have left about uh, half a yard left of um, hand dyed silk ribbon from a company in, hang on, it's called Earth, Earth Silk. They are in Seattle, Washington in the US. Um, I think I found it on Amazon though. Um, okay, so I told you about the mohair. It is Legacy Fiber Arts. The um, indie dyed fingering weight yarn that I used is this one right here. It's by Desert Bloom Yarns. Um, it is hand dyed in Arizona. And it is her chic fingering base. It is 75% superwash, 
25% silk, 437 yards. This is how much I have left, almost um, oh, over, over half a skein. There's a lot left. I haven't weighed this yet, but I will. Um, this was a special colorway that she made for the Tits Out Collective from last year, and I bought two skeins of it. And uh, she doesn't, I don't think this is part of her regular lineup, but she does have things that are very similar if you like this. I actually thought that this sweater would look really awesome in sort of rough, roughed up black gothic slash uh, witchy colors. <laughs> I think it would look really cool. It would be more my style. I'm I'm not such a romantic type of woman, but um, uh, really f feminine uh, colors and stuff. I I tend to not wear very much pink. Um, however, when I was thinking about making this sweater for you know designing for publish for publication, essentially, I just thought the dark colors. No one's going to see them. So I was determined to make uh, use colors that would photograph well. So, and I know it doesn't look like it is because it's really blowing out here, but in the photos you can see it quite well. Um, there's another little lace detail right here at, on the hip, and then right here in the front. So the um, the button band, the buttons end there. And I actually think I need to pick slightly bigger buttons because the buttonhole, um, these buttons keep slipping out. And uh, yeah, not too happy. And I'm also not too happy with the spacing that I did. I could have put them closer together. They're, they're a little far apart for me. Uh, I wished I'd lowered this one a little bit and then lowered that one. I think it would look better, but what are you gonna do? That's the downside about putting in buttonholes. I did count the rows and I got them evenly spaced. I don't know, must have ha something must have happened in the blocking. Yeah, anyway, so that is this sweater. It is um, in testing right now, and um, I'll be tech editing it, and um, I've done some pictures. I need to do some more styled pictures. I may try to get someone who can embody the design a little bit better than me to um, pose for the pictures. I just have to figure that out. Um, but yeah, it should be ready for publication in around mid-June, like June 15th, June 20th, something like that. Um, but I will keep you posted. It's like I was thinking about all these other like romantic names and I wanted to call it Tanglewood because for like Tanglewood Music Venue, which is um, a music venue near me where it, they're only open in the summer and they do like really cool. I mean, it's sort of my generation's versions of music, my generation and older because they'll have like big band um, playing sometimes. Tanglewood is used. So it's it's hard. It's hard figuring out names. There's so many patterns. Um, there's a, a million patterns. So a lot of the a lot of the common names are are taken. Or if you're Andrea Mowry, you just call your sweater the weekend, or even though there's five others that are named that because you're Andrea Mowry. <laughs> so uh, yeah, maybe that maybe that's another strategy. If I used a name that was common, if someone searches for someone else's sweater they'll find mine. So maybe, maybe I should rethink that. I joke, but hey, you know, kind of, kind of not, kind of not. All right. By the way, this is much cooler than this. I'm a little cooler. I have a tank top on underneath, which I may end up just taking this off. Let's see how I do. All right. So I told you about the yarn. I told you about the pattern. Oh, this is top down. It's a top down knit. Um, no seaming at all you're you are knitting this um as you're knitting you're closing the seams or you're knitting on the same yeah i love it i will uh, i'm gonna take it for a trial run um in the next week or two as well so i will uh keep you posted okay my works in progress i so besides these two i also put um, a lot of work on my papa sweater by Junko Okamoto, Okamoto, Moto, 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 Moto. Sorry, Junko, I'm probably mispronouncing your last name. I think I have the first name down. No, it's only two syllables. Can't really mess it up unless I re didn't emphasize something correctly. Anyway, Papa sweater. Oh, I don't have the. Uh, I'll have to just put a picture on here. Um, what it looks like. But this is mine. Um, I 
got all the way through the color work yolk and um, which you can see there look at how pretty it is and I did about 10 rows or so past the armhole and I decided that I wanted to get the sleeves done because I'm a little worried about playing yarn chicken I think I'm okay yarn wise but I wanted to make sure I had enough and I also wanted to have I wanted to feel free to make the sweater longer if I want if I didn't think it it was coming out long enough for me yet um, I have tried this on I tried it on as soon as I finished the yoke and I was able to separate for the sleeve so I'm gonna just put a picture in here of me wearing it it's I was um, I had just gotten out of bed <laughs> so I'm still in my pajamas and I just popped it on because I had finally made it to the sleeve separation so forgive my disheveled look but I was super happy and excited to try it on um, so what am I doing here with the yarn um, the the base color, it's not really showing very well on screen, but it, it is a deep dark blue. It is by, that's better better version of it right there. So you can see the, the shading of the blue. It is by Harris Phil. Do I have a tag? Yes, I do. It's by Harris Phil Designs. It's part of the Nightshade American Cormo. 80% American Cormo, 20% some other wool which I think the Cormo is natural black and because all of that that um, the nightshades if you try to look at those colors online you're gonna it's gonna be challenging because they all look black um, they just have a slight color variation and they're all they've all been given names that have to do with night so mine this color I picked is called last call I love this yarn though I love the way it knits I love the feel the hand I can't wait to block it so I can really I think it's going to soften a lot and just be beautiful. So I will definitely be um, checking out Nightshades again when I go to Rhinebeck this year. Um, and I'll probably pick up a sweater's quantity of a different color. I mean, I'm interested to see what they what they do with it. Um, the gorgeous green, blue-green that you're seeing is all one color. It is Dream State by um, Spin Cycle. I bought it at Vogue. At the Starlight Knitting Society booth, um, this color is called Deep Bump. This I bought two skeins. I have almost a full skein left uh, of it. Um, I don't know what I'll do with that. Combine it somehow. I end up with all these dribs and drabs of DK weight. That isn't enough for very much of anything. So I, I don't know what I'm going to do um, with them. Though I'm interested in doing my boy lollipop crop now that I got inspired from this one like I just love the way this came out and it's so cute um, and it's it I love the neck I just love the this illusion neckline um, I like the neckline of my boy lollipop too I don't know if I really want something that fitted I think why this works for me is that it hangs from from the bust line down it just pretty much hangs straight down and I like that <laughs> don't know if I'd like a fitted I don't know I have to figure it out I may just if I decide to make that I may modify it a bit um, to get more of this shape anyway why did I bring that up oh because it all it only needs about 500 yards of a DK weight and I was thinking maybe I could combine a couple skeins of DK weight that I have or using some scraps or something I don't know I just having a lot of stash that as like the dribs and drabs I have a full drawer of like the you know the end the bits the bits that are left over and uh, I'm not into scrap knitting so I don't know I gotta figure that out I try to try my best but I don't know don't know what to do with them donate them I guess donate them probably what I should do anyway that is my papa sweater and it, the progress on it it is a joy to knit it is what I reach for I'm in the mindless mode so where I'm just doing some sleeve decreases so it's pretty easy knitting and it's um the only bad thing about it is that it's big it's a bulky sweater um so it, it's in this it's in my big twig and horn um wool like it almost looks felted but I don't think it is um, probably just brushed wool flannel bag that's fully lined it's really cool I love this bag it was very expensive and it's got leather handles and it is 
basically that Papa sweater is filling this up. The, um, the thing about the Papa sweater is that it comes in one size only and so it's not graded. It's a, a 57 and a half, I think 50, I don't have the pattern with me here, but a 57 and a half inch chest measurement. So I think someone was explaining that the idea is that if you wanted to make it smaller, you would go down in um, yarn size. So that's a DK weight. So you'd keep going down until you got to the size or you keep going up to if you wanted a bigger size. I guess so um, because that is a charted pattern with the, the yoke, it wouldn't be easy to just add more stitches because it just wouldn't, yeah, I don't know, it just wouldn't work out very well. It's also a very long yoke. Like when you'll see in the from the picture that I put on, um, when I got past the yoke, it was already covering my bust. So um, it was like down to here. So it's going to be a big baggy loose sweater, but I think it'll, I like it. I won't get to wear it to work because I think it'll be too sloppy looking for work unless it's like a really cold snowy day and I can get away with like looking a little less put together. But uh, generally, I don't, I, I need weekend sweaters too. Not everything has to be for work, right? Um, I showed it to my boyfriend and he loved it. He said to me, I don't really wear sweaters, but um, cause he's not a sweater guy. He's always hot. He's always, always hot. Um, but I said, to, I showed it to him and I said, this is supposed to be like, it's really big. I think it would fit you. Would you wear it with these flowers? Cause I was just curious. Cause I said, it's called a Papa sweater. And the idea is that it, it's a sweater, an oversized sweater that you would borrow from your father. Only it's got flowers on it. So I was like, mm, not really sure too many men of my dad's generation would wear flowers but I think my boyfriend's generation would and he was like yeah I'd wear it he goes but I'm not a sweater guy and I said well I'm not making it for you because of course I don't want the curse of the boyfriend sweater <sighs> I'm babbling aren't I okay so I worked on that so I worked on these three mostly the last um week but I did cast on one new thing I cast on the Like a Cloud cardigan, which everyone, everyone made last year. And I just, I had queued it. So the it's by Hohi Locatelli. It's this lovely textured cardigan. Um, I didn't do much. Um, I had um, one of my friends, very, very dear friends, father passed away um, this week while I was home on vacation and I needed something mindless that was also kind of small that I could work on, um, while, cause I went to be with him and sat with him for a few days and I just wanted something that I could keep my, keep myself busy. So I didn't, I didn't do much. I did about maybe an inch and a quarter of it. You can see right there. I think, I think it's a texture. It has like a very subtle texture that you just do with um, knits and pearls. The yarn I'm using, I've been planning this for a long time. I bought this yarn last March, so March 2018. Um, this is the yarn I'm using. It's the color name is called Tangled Web We Weave and it is by, do I have the tag? I do not. It is by Little Gray Sheep. Um, the, the British, um, uh, 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 the British <laughs> farm <laughs> yarn company, um, where they have their own sheep breed, but this is the Gotland, um, yarn. I'm going to put the name of it on, on screen cause I really don't recall. I bought it so long ago. Um, I, it was after EYF. In 2018 I did not go um, but I was so I had FOMO I guess and I had been reading about this company and I started to follow them on Instagram and um, I I really really wanted some yarn from their company and she had posted this color on Instagram this it's tangled web we weave and I just loved it so I ordered a sweaters quantity without knowing really what I was gonna do with it um, and then as I was, um, one day I caked it cause I thought I just need to make something. I'm going to do some swatching and let me, let me get it on the needles. And, um, I had also been thinking a lot about this sweater and this sweater is designed for a, um, combination of, sorry about the crinkling, crinkle, 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 um, 
combination of a fingering weight Shibuya yarns, a fingering weight alpaca merino, and then a um, silk mohair, mohair silk blend. Both Shibui, both lace weights. And you're meant to hold those together for the whole sweater. And I thought to myself, this is fuzzy. I bet you this would work, and I wouldn't have to hold two two um, finger two yarns together. And so I swatched it, and it worked. So I loved it. I just had to go down. I think I went down a needle size to get gauge, and then I, oh, I went down a. This is another one that I went down a needle size, and then I also went down a size to get the size for me. Um, so I'm making the second smallest size, I think. Yeah, I'm making the second smallest size. Um, even though that's not my size. <laughs> but so far so good. I, I think I'll probably put a lot of um, a lot of progress in it. This is living in my very first project bag, which I got many years ago from a friend. And I sewed a llama patch on it. Isn't it so cute? It's just a drawstring bag. It has a pouch inside, a zipper pouch inside. Um, can't tell you anything about the bag because it was a gift and I don't know where it's from. Um, I mostly use fringe field bags just because they're, I like the handle, they're convenient, they're big, they usually hold whatever I'm making except the Papa sweater. The Papa sweater was living in a fringe field bag for a little while and then it had to get out because it was too big. Okay, I've also decided it's time to return to some of my long languishing whips. So I'm going to go back to knitting the Alice sweater. That is by uh, Isabel Kramer, my other Hohi Locatelli and Isabel Kramer. Those are the two, my two go-to of the well-known big name designers. Um, so I have, I don't know if you remember, I got down to separating for the sleeves with this cardigan um, and I stopped. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. I just got busy doing other things. So, um, but yeah, I, it w I was cruising along. It's in this pretty brick red sweater um, yarn, DK weight yarn from Green Mountain Spinnery. So that's the, that's the color. Isn't it beautiful? I'm not really into red, but for some reason this really spoke to me. This is yarn I bought at Rhinebeck last, this past Rhinebeck. So I'm trying to trying to knit through everything. So the style of yarn is called Music. You can see it right there in the corner. TK weight, 100% American fine wool. And the color way is Brick House. Brick House. And I think, yeah, there you go. Really beautiful yarn. I love it. Been loving the sheepy wooly yarns lately. Sheepy wool. I have another sweater's quantity of Green Mountain um, spinnery yarn that I have not cast on yet, but it is sitting over by my. It's for a design of my own. Um, I do want to make it because I think it would be a really good beach sweater. Um, so I do want to, I would love to get it done this summer. Maybe I'll do that next when I get this done. I don't like to have two or more, I don't like to have too many designs in my head. And since I'm self-publishing everything so far, um, I am making something for publication, but I don't know if I'm going to get accepted. Um, so I have like a couple of piles of yarn over here by my, on my side, by my side. I'm not going to talk to you about them though because I'm not allowed. <laughs> if it's going to be published, they don't want it anywhere. So I am going to be doing those designs. Um, I have two. We'll see what happens. But since I'm pretty much publishing everything else myself, um, you know, it doesn't really, there's no urgency. There's no urgency. So I just figure space it out. I'll, you know, work on this design. Then when this design is completed and published, I'll start, I'll cast on that other that other sweater. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to go back to working on the Alice sweater. That's going to um, be something that will, I think, will follow right on the heels of the Papa sweater. And I also have, um, I have another, that cat sandwich fiber sweater that I made uh, out of the Elton pattern by Hohi Locatelli, the one that's mohair, 
fingering weight stripe mix um i got these i joined a um, game of thrones club and i got house stark colors um sock yarns and so i'm gonna make using these three colors right here i'm gonna make another version of the elton cardigan for my spring summer air con in air conditioned um, need a little extra layer on cool nights or in air conditioned um, sweater so that's another thing that I'm planning to work on and last I do have another couple whips um, one is super boring and mindless it's like these booty shorts it's gr plain gray yarn it's a lot of stitches on tiny needles I get so bored with it I, I knit a few rows and I'm done um, knitting on it for a while. I have that. I also have the blue, no, red moon sweater by Born and Raised. I got inspired to start working on that again, but I think I'm going to let it lie a little longer um, while I work on these other things that are more wear now because that's definitely not wear now. But I, after I made it through the Papa sweater, which is like, I think it's 50 rows of color work. I was like, oh, let me go look at the Red Moon sweater pattern because I think I um, I think it might be less. And now that I've made it all the way through 50 rows where you have to like look at the chart and that was like sit on the couch and watch something without subtitles knitting, um, I think I can move the, um, the Red Moon sweater pattern over to the couch so that it's something that I do. And under the same circumstances so it is almost in fact the same number of rows um, in the yoke pattern so I do want to um, push through on that but I think I'm going to pick it up later in the summer be and then wear it um, at the you know early fall ish weather because it's a fingering weight sweater um, and in the meantime I'm going to push out some of these other things so I decided that I um, if I'm going to have a chart to do <laughs> I really want to do this. This this is a this is a future. What would a dunder knit calls this vicarious knitting? So this is these are my future knits. I really want to do this lace cardigan by Katarina Schneider called Mirtha, and I think it's got lace. I think it has a plain yoke, and then it's got lace all the way down, and then plain sleeves. And I think there's lace in the back as well. But it's, it's a pretty intense, um, maybe intense isn't the rod, it's like 32 rows. Okay, so the lace pattern is 32 rows. And then you're repeating it a few times, it looks like. Um, I do think there's back, there's a back. That's left and right chart, one chart at a time. <laughs> Which is why I'm gonna, I'm prioritizing this cast on over, um, over the, red moon sweater even though that's already cast on and I've knit some of it um, anyway I want to make this Martha sweater out of this yarn right here this is uh, Julie Aslan Fino which is 75% merino 20 15% cashmere 10% silk and there's the tag and the color is road to Rhinebeck um, so I bought two skeins of this I think I bought two at Rhinebeck last year at Indie Untangled. This was the Indie Untangled color. Um, and then I, when I decided that I wanted to make this sweater out of it, or I thought it would make a really pretty, it's just a gorgeous um, sort of taupey, silvery gray with flecks of red and gold. It's supposed to be inspired by the pavement um, during Rhinebeck that's covered with autumn leaves. So like the gold, yellow, red, orange um, colors. So um, I looked on, I looked for someone who was, who may be interested in de-stashing it and I found someone who was willing to sell me one skein. So I, I needed three. So I'm good and the colors are pretty close. They're close enough. So that is going to be a future cast on. So I may have that to show you in my next podcast. I think I'm going to have the Papa done by my next podcast, but maybe not. Who knows? Um, might not have any finished objects. All right. How am I doing on time? Oh, not too bad. Um, 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 that is all my knitting. I now have spinning to share with you. I spun up a lot of yarn over the last couple weeks. I can't remember what I showed you. I usually put it in a pile over here, so I don't think I showed you any. I think I showed you my first 
four ounces of um, of yarn that I was planning to spend. And then I think I showed you this, happily ever after, right? I showed you this fiber. I bought a pound and a half of this because I had no idea how much I would need. Um, I love the gray and very pale blue um, that is in this. However, when you spin it, Spun, I spun and I plied and I made real yarn look at that when you spin it it sort of just becomes ah this beautiful silvery color that's got some little bit of layering of that light blue this is the very first skein that I made that I plied and everything so my very first time plying I was aiming for DK weight but I ended up with a worsted weight so it wasn't that far off um, came out really cute I think and I went on to make two more skeins so I have three skeins so far I didn't really know what I was planning to do with this but now that I see it I realize like it's really too glittery for me to wear but I think I would really like it as a throw as a blanket I've been looking for a bulkier yarn to knit into a throw ever since one of my throws that I hand knit a while ago I accidentally felted it I still use it, my cat loves it, um, but I accidentally felted it. So I have enough of the fiber to make, I think I was figuring out seven more skeins because I have 14 ounces left. So yeah, no, 14, two, two, two. So if you do two, 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 yes. Yeah, so it's, be, yeah, if I do four ounce skeins, Seven. No, I have enough for three and a half more skeins. Yeah. Um, but that's plenty. I think that'll be plenty for a nice throw. This this here is about 500 yards between the three skeins. I did get smaller. So this was my first one. I think this is my last one, my most recent one. So I got really nice and tight. It's more leaning more towards DK now. Um, my boyfriend noticed the difference, so that was cool. Um, that he was like, oh, you've, you've gotten thinner. Your yarn has gotten thinner. What, what, that's what all women want to hear, right? Oh, you've gotten thinner. <laughs> um, so, I, But I think what I'm going to do, I was reading in, oh, I forgot to, oh, I'm going to go get my books. I'll be right back. So this, I've been reading in this book, Yarn A Texture, Yarn A Texture, Yarny Texture, by Julian Jillian Moreno, a knitter's guide to spinning, building exactly the yarn you want. So I was reading about different ways to finish your skeins, and one of them she calls menacing, which is um, taking your skein and dunking it in cold water, agitating it, then taking it out of cold, putting it in hot, and you go back and forth, agitate it in the hot, and then go back and forth between the hot and cold. Um, and then you can felt the yarn. So there's a way to do it where instead of, you're not felting the strands together, at least I hope not, um, but you're just felting the yarn. And I thought that would be really cool. That would be a very cool blanket. Like I was thinking about Knit Collage, their yarn, like they have some yarns that are felted in, on the yarn, in the skein, so not strand to strand, but felted um, chunks in it. So I thought that would be of a fun thing to do so i may try that especially since i've got a few more um skeins to spin um but this book has been really really interesting in learning about how to put color together so you can see it right here on the see right there on the um cover there about uh, she talks a lot about how when you buy a bat of yarn or a fiber I didn't realize this, like this added like complexity for me to my um, spinning. I just thought spinning was making yarn. I didn't realize that you're also putting color together. So I learned quite a lot from reading this as well as um, talking to, or not talking to, watching on um, Blueprint, I watched some Felicia Lowe. I watched like a four hour class with Felicia Lowe about color and about how to work with color when you're spinning it because I'll show you a couple of my stash quotations like if you look at this 
bat right here that I just got from Classy Squid, Classy Squid Fiber Company. So if you see those colors there, if I were to spin those, spin this without thinking, I would probably end up with brown because red and blue are, or orange and blue are complementary colors that make brown. So anytime colors are across the color wheel from each other, so like orange and blue are, you end up with brown. So we are across the wheel from each other. If you add red, you get like an orangey brown. So you get this like really dull color. So if you don't want that, there's a way to um, spin. There are multiple ways to spin to avoid getting just muddy, murky colors. Cause your eyes, even if each, your eye can see each fiber, like you've probably seen yarn like this, your eye can see both like yellow and purple. When you get up close, far away, the, the sweater or the garment or whatever socks the thing is going to look brown it's going to look like taupey brown to you um so you want to avoid that i think i mean most in most cases i don't think anybody would buy a beautiful <laughs> um bat of fiber like this and then say i'm getting that so i can make brown <laughs> i mean you're a Attracted or I was attracted to this because of the color differentiation. So this will be this is that this is actually going to be a really good challenge like what she calls these um, Classy squid calls these um, Bats like this cuttlefish. So this is just a little two ounce bat that I thought I bought two of them that I looked for colors that I that I liked and um, They're just like mixes. They're like sort of her end of the you know the, the dread, last dredges that she's her scraps that she's putting together into bats and then selling them as these um, one-of-a-kind cuttlefish um, bats so um, I thought they would be fun to play with um, using what I learned from Felicia Lowe and also what I learned from this book here to just play around with combining color on in the yarn so that is something that I've been working on. Um, after I did my third skein of this Happily Ever After yarn, I decided to take a bat of yarn that I had bought from um, Edinburgh. I didn't buy it in Edinburgh, but I bought it post. I did a look back and was like, I really want that. And when I decided I was going to learn how to spin, I bought a, a, a bat of yarn, which I'm gonna put a picture in here of, um, a, bat of a bat of fiber. Um, from Spin City, which is a UK-based fiberist, uh, fiber maker. Fiber, I think she does yarn too, maybe not, but she does do drop spindles. Remember I, I showed you a while back, I probably showed this same exact bat. So I took that bat and I opened it up. After I had read, I got inspired by, um, after what I had read in that book. I haven't read everything in there, but I read a little bit about color and color mixing and then watching Fel Felicia Lowe. I laid it out and I took a good look at it and I realized that there was turquoise all through it, but there, that there was also purple, this deep burgundy and then green. And the purple and that burgundy and green are gonna make, um, a, basically they're gonna make brown because they're across the, the turquoise, wait, turquoise is here. And then there was, there was turquoise and green, so these two colors, and then there were basically these two colors in it. So I thought if I just spin this, I'm gonna lose the color differentiation and I'm gonna end up with brown. So I divided the bat into two piles, one that had primarily green and the other one, both had turquoise and the other one had primarily red and, and purple. Um, and then I spun single plied both of those. So I'm going to put a picture of those in here. And then finally I plied them and I did that last night and it is still damp, but this is the result. So I think from far back, you still see like a lot of the turquoise, um, but you also see green and you also see purple. This bat had um, a lot of silk in it which I didn't enjoy spinning. Like anywhere you see these chunks of white, like right through here, that is silk, um, pretty much. There, it was some white fleece in there too. There's some, that's, that's silk, um, that white with the green. 
Um, and I got, I got my thinnest yet in terms of, um, how, how thin I was able to make the yarn. This one borders between sport weight and DK. Definitely not thicker than DK though. Um, but I do really like the results. Like I was hoping that I would end up with some purple and burgundy together. And you can see that there. Um, I got some strips that are all turquoise. I got a lot of strips that are turquoise and green. And then I got a lot of strips where the green and the brown, that burgundy color are um, barber pulling together, which I really like. I like that barber pull look. I'm very curious to see what this looks like swatched. Um, I think it could be pretty interesting. I got almost 300 yards. So that was also super cool. It's still damp, so I pulled it from, I had, had it hanging out by the pool so it would dry. It's like some dry in some parts, but really wet in others. Because um, I just finished plying it this morning. Applied most of it last night, um, but it was getting late. So I, have, I got to the end of one bobbin and I needed to do the some sort of combo with the the remains of it uh, of the bobbin so I, I didn't want to figure out something new so late at night so I decided to just sleep on it and work on it in the morning which I'm really glad I did but uh yeah I really like it I mean I am pleased with the way the colors worked out I don't know what I'll do with this I was thinking that um these single basically like a single skein of um yarn like oh maybe this could be my boy lollipop that would be fun I don't have quite enough I'd have to combo this with some other yarn I'd have to see what I have um, that would go with it so that I could get a full sweater like but I could probably make this the top part and then maybe I have like a tonal I think I have a tonal turquoise that could be the bottom that would be cool that would give me something to do with this I like that idea um, I also have been learning, I, I don't know how many of you spin, um, and how many of you are interested in like learning more or hearing my experiences about spinning, but since I'm just learning, I'm like soaking up everything and, um, I've been watching Babel's Traveling Yarn. I love her, her, um, podcast and she does spin too. So that's been interesting to hear. She weights her yarn when it dries. I've read that you're not supposed to do that. Um, actually, Ju Jillian Moreno has a, she talks all about it, the finishing, and she has a picture. Let's see if I can find it while I'm talking to you. She has a picture where she shows what happens when you weight your yarn when it dries and then um, knit with it. And then she, so she knit, a, she weighted her yarn as it dried. She knit a swatch photographed it, then took a picture of it, blocked it, washed it, uh, wet blocked it, and um, showed, oh, here it is, <laughs> showed what happened. So see right here, wait, let me pull this over, see right here. So this is it, this is weighted yarn, unblocked on this side, and then blocked over here on this side. Don't weight your yarn. <laughs> I read too that weighting yarn is something that people do if they're planning to weave with it because they're probably not going to block it again. But if you're going to do anything like that, I don't really know why Grace weights her yarn. I don't know if she's planning to weave with it. I don't know if she over twists it. But one of the things that I also read is that when your yarn is spun, and you hold it like this, if it twists slightly in one direction or the other, in one, I, can, I don't know which is which, I don't remember, but if it twists one way, you've got, you over twisted it when you plied it. If it twists the other way, you've over, you've over twisted it when you did the single ply. Um, so, but if it hangs straight like this one does, then your, your, um, your twists are just right. A little bit of a drift is okay, is considered fine. Like, so a little bit of a drift this way, like if it, like my blue skeins, my first couple, um, they twisted, they drifted that way um, after, before I blocked them, before I wet blocked them, like after I took it off of the bobbin and wound it up like this. Um, 
And if that happens to you, if you get more than, like if you get a, um, a second twist, like so this would be one twist, if you got a second twist, then you've really over plied it, over, over spun it, um, you need to work on your spin, <laughs> not, not weight your yarn. So just FYI, I don't know if anyone else, if, how, how many of you are um, also following Grace and if you had those questions. It's good to, I would highly recommend, like if you're thinking about doing a class um, or if you're thinking about spinning, learning to spin or learning a new craft or something like that, I would highly recommend Blueprint. Like I started to watch YouTube videos and I watched this total idiot on YouTube. I'm not going to name her, but she didn't know what she was doing. And so there I am learning from someone who doesn't know what they're doing. Um, and blueprint, I took an Amy King class. I, it was easy to watch, um, went quick. I practiced all the things that she talked about. Um, and that helped me tremendously to like, to, it's well worth the money that it costs. Like I, I paid like $80 for a year subscription to blueprint. Um, so that I could get all the spinning classes that I want. It's well worth it. Well, well worth it. Or take a class with an actual person if you can. I, I, I asked around. There aren't any spinners in my area <laughs> except for Alex Creates, and he's kind of far for classes. So um, I just decided to see what I could do on my own and then take a class. I may take a class from Ryan Beck. Um, okay, other acquisitions. I also picked up at, um, someone talked about this on some, I think Amy King talked about this. The Alden Amos Big Book of Hand Spinning. It's an old, um, older, I think from like 2001 was when it was published by uh, Stephanie, no. It's by Alden Amos. Of course, yeah, 2001. Um, it was written in 2001, so it's almost 20 years old. Um, it's got a lot of very practical and technical stuff about fiber and about spinning and it just answers uh, a lot of my questions um, a lot of my more technical questions so I really recommend this as well and, and his writing style is very interesting it's very no-nonsense um, so I have been learning a lot on my own about spinning and it's been really fun. I have nothing on my spinning wheel right now. I think what I'm gonna do, I don't have, other than those little color blips, um, I don't have anything planned. I'm gonna just probably continue um, spinning some more of the Happily Ever After. And what I've been doing is weighing out two ounces, um, two two ounce bags and then single plying them and then are making my singles on two bobbins and then plying it using a two ply method. I haven't tried any other plying other than two ply. So um, I do want to try chain ply at some point. I don't know when I get the appropriate yarn for chain ply. I will try chain ply. Ah, yes. Okay, I'm just going to wrap this up with a couple acquisitions that I got. Um, I saw this on, on uh, my friend Christy Glass this channel and I had to buy it. Um, it is this adorable felted handmade pouch with this cute little thing here um, from Fab, Fab Jean Fibers and it's made in Nepal. Fair trade item, handmade in Nepal. Um, Frab John Fibers is located in Vermont, um, so not too far. They have two size of these pouches. They have many other more traditional um, felted pouches with like flowers and leaves and stuff like that. But this one I just adored, the monster with her knitting needles and her yarn. Don't know what I'll do with it, but I just had to have it as soon as I saw it. And I've learned with Christy Glass, if you see something that she's talking about, um, and there's a limited quantity, you probably should get it right away. So I just ordered it and it came. I also talked to you last time about um, a, my my broken sheep mug and that I told you that I ordered four. So three of my four mugs have come. So I, and I've been loving using all of them. So this is one right here. It's got a little black sheep and it's got these cute little orange flowers that some of the sheep are eating. I love the, all the different types of sheep. The white face sheep, black face sheep, and all black sheep. Um, so it's got, it's actually got a little tea in it. 
I thought I, um, this is a Fredericksburg, Virginia um, potter, Anna Branner's Cloth and Clay. I found her on, on um, in Etsy. So that's what the, where that one is from. Here's another postcard from her. Those cute little black. These are the cutest little sheep. This is what was on my original sheep mug. So I got two of these really beautiful, very slender mugs. Um, they don't hold much, but they are just so classic and beautiful. Like I thought for maybe espresso, but I also use them for tea in the evening. And I didn't get two sheep. I bought, I fell in love with this dragonfly one. So you can see that they're about the same size. The sheep is slightly smaller, but a lot of her pattern, I mean, designs, I'm, I don't know the potter off the top of my head. I'm going to look for it and put it on screen. Um, where a lot of these like pen and ink looking, um, illustrations. So there you go. My fourth one hasn't come yet. It's another, I think if I recall right, it's white. Um, it's a white, mug as well and it has a black ink drawing on it like this similar to these but uh yeah i think that's all that's everything i have to share with you this is a super long video hopefully i'll be cutting out some <laughs> so not too too long i knew i had a lot of content to share with you so i hope you don't mind i hope you made it all the way through and i hope you enjoyed it even if you had to watch it in increments which is totally totally fine um, thank you so much for spending time with me. I hope you enjoyed my content this week. If you liked the video, please hit the thumbs up button. Please subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. It'll help my small channel grow and reach more viewers. That's the way the YouTube algorithm works. The more likes, the more comments, the more, the more uh, my video will get in front of other people. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend and a lovely next couple weeks, and I will see you soon. Bye.